Hey Windowers, and welcome to another episode of Windows on Windows, part of the series on the development of Windows Vista. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at Windows Codename Longhorn build 4093, a milestone 7 or 8 alpha build from the 19th of August 2004. This is one of the last builds, and probably the last main lab build, compiled before Longhorn's infamous development reset. Indeed, only four hours after the compilation of this build, the first dabble into a post-reset Longhorn, build 3790, was compiled, based on the Windows Server 2003 codebase, rather than the Server 2003 release candidate code that Longhorn had been based on up to this point. Furthermore, just one week after this build, on the 26th of August 2004, an internal Microsoft announcement officially stated that Longhorn development was going to start all over again. With development in dire straits and a complete reset of the code literally only hours away, build 4093 is the last hurrah of Longhorn as it was originally envisaged. So, if you're ready to see a return of WinFS, new wallpaper and icons, new sidebar tiles, control panel applets, a new Windows Media Player, Windows Movie Maker, wireless presentation wizard, licensing dialogues, user account control prototype and more, let's start. So first impressions of this build is there's a nice new wallpaper. The visual style is the same as recent builds. It's the slate visual style. The sidebar looks pretty much the same as build 4074 except that the clock tile is now unlocked from the bottom right hand corner like it was previously. So you can actually move this around like this. Let's have a look in the start menu. Now this is interesting. The start menu is pretty much empty, apart from IE and Outlook Express and this migration wizard. Notice that not even basic Windows apps such as WordPad or Calculator are included. This is due to something that Microsoft were working on in Longhorn at the time called componentization. They first announced it at the Windows Hardware Engineering Conference 2003, saying that Longhorn would be built from a list of components. This basically means that what they wanted to do was to split up certain features of Longhorn into different packages or components, which could be added together in various combinations to give different versions of the OS, such as Home Edition, Professional Edition, etc. What we're looking at here is essentially the base OS component, so this is the one upon which all the other components would eventually be built. However, even though this build is visibly very empty, there are lots and lots of goodies hidden underneath the surface. So firstly, I just want to say a very big thank you to Melcher, uh, one of the very inspiring people that works at Longhorn.ms for his assistance in helping me to explore the hidden goodies in this build. And also, the reason I said earlier that this was a Milestone 7 or 8 build is because Melcher actually sent me some information about how he'd uncovered some evidence by way of some internal Microsoft documents that he'd managed to get a look at. Uh, that come from this stage in Longhorn development that reference the post-reset Longhorn as Milestone 8.2, which as he pointed out, only really makes sense if there was a Milestone 8 or 8.1 to begin with. So it would seem that possibly this build was actually Milestone 8 and not Milestone 7. So let's get started. Let's take a look at, first of all, the Explorer and Desktop changes. So I've already mentioned the new wallpaper. Here it is. It doesn't have a name. It's just called Bliss. If you have a look down here, if you've not noticed this already, there's a new sound icon down here. It's a nice blue icon. It does the same thing as in XP though, when you double click it. I mentioned the start menu and the lack of programs. The layout of the start menu hasn't changed and neither have any of these options. However, the help and support center is slightly different now. The design is slightly different. Mainly, it doesn't work anymore. There are no help options that you can actually get to like you could in build 4074 as you can see i mentioned the clock tile in the sidebar and how it's now unlocked from the bottom but a really interesting kind of backwardsness about that is that you can actually now pin tiles down here into the corner so you can actually choose a tile that you'd like to be pinned and they will just sit down here and you can also unpin them obviously and they'll pop back up to the top there. Now there are also some new sidebar tiles that you can activate in this build so I'll show you those now. So we have this video capture tile so obviously it's meant to capture your desktop but it doesn't work. 
you just get this little box, but nothing actually happens. So the other tiles you get are this one, which is Vidya Capture as well, and it just says Capture Me. This volume tile here, which if you click on you get this little fly out where you can go to your audio devices preferences and reset your defaults. And a test tile, which just says hello world, and then you get a little fly out with options and stuff. So there you go. So those are the tiles. Let's have a look at the themes. So the themes you get are exactly the same as in build 4074, however, I've not done a video on this build but I did take a look at the recently leaked build 4088 and in 4088 I checked out the theme options and the Windows Classic theme had lost all of its recolors so you could no longer select any of these. There was just one Windows Classic theme colour and it looked like this one except it had a black title bar and that was the only classic theme option in build 4088 so that's just a little nugget of extra information for you and obviously in Vista that was the case they did actually eventually get rid of all these recolors and you just had literally Windows Standard and that was it I think you had classic as well but those were the only options in Vista when it RTM'd so let's now move on and have a look at what's new in the control panel so in the control panel, if you switch to classic view, there are two new options that make their appearance here. We have speech recognition, complete with a new icon, and we have text to speech, complete with a new icon. And if you launch these, you'll see that we get these new style, very Vista-esque dialog boxes. I don't think that's going to work because I've not got a mic installed on here. Yeah, I'm also running VMware and it hasn't installed any audio drivers, so I don't think this is going to work either. What I'll do is I'll just include some screenshots that you can have a look at, so I'll put these here. So here's speech recognition. And here's text to speech. So a few other things which are related to the control panel, but not actually attached to the user interface, are the following. So firstly, we have a return now of an Avalon style or Avalon based display properties control panel. And it's called lhdesk.exe. And this is what it looks like. And again, it looks very similar to the one that ended up in Vista. We have these options here and then we have these links down the left hand side to related control panel items. Now some of these sections work and some don't. So you can see that some of them have their own dedicated pages already as well. And others link to the old XP style dialogues. This is interesting. I don't think this is in Vista. That one's not working. And that one's not working either. But that's interesting nevertheless. Now something related to this display properties dialog which doesn't work out of the box but which I can show you thanks to Melcher again is this little box that's supposed to pop up when you change any of your display settings. And it looks like this. So another Avalon based control panel is for power options. And again, not everything works.
and again it looks very Vista-esque. And yet another semi-related kind of thing is something called the wireless presentation wizard. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think this is in Vista either. So it's basically, if you want to give a presentation, you can like stream your desktop to other computers over Wi-Fi, which sounds like a pretty good idea, actually. Now, just a couple of other random dialogues that I can show you. So this first one is um, a fax dialogue, and it's fax options. So I'm not entirely sure which part of the UI this is meant to connect to, but it's kind of interesting. And there's a very similar one called print options. So if I just put in one of these numbers, you get some different dialog boxes. So this one is obviously print settings. This one is a little bit buggy. In fact, you can see them all here now. Lastly, do you remember the burn to disk wizard that I showed you? I think it was in build 4039 or something like that. It has been more or less present all this time, but I've not showed it in any of the recent videos because it's been pretty much unchanged. However, I thought it would be interesting to have a little look back and look at what it's like now. Now, the only difference, if you compare this to what it looked like previously, is that the banner here is now white instead of blue and there's no longer any back button at the top. There are no longer also any descriptions for these three options. The rest of the wizard, as far as I can tell, is the same. Now also present in build 4093, there are some new licensed dialogues. So there are three dialogues that you can look at. This is the first one, it's the product key dialogue. And if you just type one in for fun, you can press activate, although obviously it's not going to do anything closes itself like that. There's this one which is for phone activation which obviously doesn't work again. And finally there's this one and this is the screen for purchasing a new product key. And you can see at the moment it's referring to these two SKUs or versions as Longhorn Home Edition and Longhorn Premium Edition. And finally, and I think I've shown something to this effect before, it might have been in 4074, it's a user account control prototype that you can kind of get a glimpse at. You get this little window security little prompt, which is obviously what user account control did, but it looks slightly different to this but very similar. Now finally, let's just finish off with some specific features and let's talk about what Bill Gates referred to at the PDC conference 2003. This is about a year after that actually happened, but he was talking about the three pillars of Longhorn, two of which were WinFS, a new file system, and Avalon. So WinFS, after about a year of absence, is now back in this build. If you go to services, there is a WinFS service. It's turned off by default, but you can turn it on, and I believe it actually functions as well. Now, Avalon, I've already showed you uh, quite a few bits of that. The display properties dialog and the power management dialog are both Avalon based. And another part of build 4093, which is Avalon based, is this new movie maker application, which throws a massive error when you try and open it. But it looks like this. And if I just expand it, you can see a bit more of the UI. It's very dark, it's kind of black themed. And it's also very buggy as you can see. It's kind of enough said really, isn't it? Version 3, build 0000 apparently. Now there's one more app which I haven't shown you so far, which may or may not be a new version of Windows Media Player, I don't quite know. And I believe this is Avalon based as well and it's called MX Player. And it does actually say Windows Media Player, so that leads me to believe that it was a new version of Media Player. But again, like Movie Maker and lots of other stuff in this build, it's just very buggy and not finished. So none of these options down here work. That's just a blank box. This switches to skin mode, except that it doesn't work. See, so you've got a corporate skin, but you can't apply it. 
It doesn't play media files very well either, it tends to crash. A nice little quirk of this, which you don't really notice straight away, unless you go looking for it, is uh, this one. Switch to sidebar player. And if you click it, it collapses to the sidebar. And obviously crashes Explorer as well, which is brilliant. But when it comes back, you can kind of see the UI it was meant to have, sort of. It's just all glitched out. One final interesting thing that I can show you is this little app called MX Options here. If you double click it, nothing happens. However, if you drag an XML file onto the app, watch what happens. So it's actually an XML reader and this XML file that I've dragged onto here is a Windows Media Player Options dialog and I'm assuming this was meant to be part of the new media player that we just saw. So this particular one is for CD copy settings. There are a lot of options in here. As you can see. So that's it for Windows Codename Longhorn build 4093. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything else you'd like me to have a look at and explore in this build and I'll get back to you. Let me know equally if you've had a look at this build yourself and found something that I've missed, I would love to know. If you've enjoyed this episode of Winners on Windows, then please consider subscribing to be notified when new episodes are uploaded. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.